myself Ayuva Prasad Damarla, a retired deputy GM from BSNL and ex senior project manager APSFM and ex adjunct professor EC department PSMR College of Engineering and Technology Vijayawada Andhra Pradesh. In this session, as part of telephone networks, we will discuss about telephone numbering plan. This is the part one and we will conclude this topic in part two. So in this session, we are trying, we will try to understand how telephone numbers are allotted by the telecom service provider to their telephone users, subscribers or the customers. The objective of numbering plan is to uniquely identify each and every subscriber connected to a telecom network. This is the main objective. So each and every subscriber should be uniquely identified based on the telecom network to which it is connected. In the early stages of development, the numbering scheme was confined to a single local exchange and exchanges were identified by the names of the towns in which they were located. So the numbers were given based on the local exchange and the name of the exchange is given by their name of the town. So Vijayawada, Guntur, Hyderabad, Bombay, Chennai, like that. The scheme worked well as long as there is only one exchange per town. But as the subscriber volume grew, it became necessary to introduce more than one exchange in a town. So this pattern was initially, it was okay when the number of users, telephone subscribers were very less and the exchanges were located in the main business areas. So subsequently, the number of users increased, not only in terms of numbers, in terms of the geographical area. So from with reference to the exchange, the some other colony or area may come up a few kilometers, more than some five to six kilometers away from this exchange. So as we already know, and as already we have discussed in subscribe group systems, there is a limitation for the line to be connected to this exchange in terms of subscriber group and other constraint is you cannot give uh, infinite number of connections from a single exchange. Depending upon the exchange capacity, the number of lines you can provide also is limited. So taking in this, these factors into consideration, there was a necessity to have more than one exchange depending upon the town and its number of users and its geographical spread. Generally, a large centrally located exchange called the main exchange serving the main business center of the town and a number of smaller exchanges known as satellite exchanges serving different residential localities were used to cope up with the growing traffic in a large area. So as the city is expanding, as the town is expanding, as the number of users are expanding, so to resolve this problem, so smaller, in addition to the main exchange, prime exchange, so smaller exchanges are installed in the peripherals or in different uh, upcoming localities. So all this area put together, that is 
the telephone exchanges uh, installed in the different colonies. They are all known as satellite exchanges. And there will be one or two or three main exchanges depending upon the capacity of the town or city. And these satellites are connected, exchanges are connected to this main exchange. Main exchanges may be one, two, or three, or more, depending upon the uh, geographical area of the city and the number of connections. The area containing the complete network of the main exchange, which includes satellite exchanges is known as multi-exchange area. So let us assume in a city there are three main exchanges and of course for easy understand let us assume there is only one main exchange and there are some three four satellite exchanges. So this main exchange plus satellite exchanges put together, it is known as multi-exchange area. You have more than one exchange in the town. Out of uh, these three, four, whatever we are considering for explanation purpose, one is the main exchange. So there are some more exchanges connected to the main exchange. So the entire network, the main exchange plus satellite exchanges put together is known as multi-exchange area of the town bar city. A common numbering scheme was then required for the area so that the digits dialed can identify a given terminating exchange and do not vary with the exchange originating the call. So let us assume in a town, there is one main exchange and some five satellite exchanges. So somebody is this all five satellite exchanges and the main exchange put together. The satellite exchanges are connected to main exchanges. Main processing will take place in the main exchange unit. So this multi-exchange area, somebody is trying or call, making a call. He need not make a call to only main exchange. He may be interested in speaking with some other satellite exchange subscriber or customer. So each exchange should be identified within the multi-exchange area. So that is known as the terminating exchange. The exchange to which the call is meant for. So somebody is dialing from Hyderabad to Vijayawad. So there may there are some say some 15, 16 exchanges in, in and around Vijayawada with three main exchanges. So the call can be terminated on any of these 15 exchanges. Accordingly, we have to identify and route the call to the satellite exchange or the main exchange concerned. For the calls originating from a location outside the multi-exchange area, there is a need to identify the area by a common code. So when somebody is making a call from other than this multi-exchange area from outside, from outstation, so we have to identify in our example the main exchange and the satellite exchanges put together with a single code, common code, which we in due course we call as SPD code. So somebody is calling say from Bombay to Vijayawada. So the call may be to one of the subscribers in one of the 15, 16 exchanges we have considered for Vijayawada city. So the entire multi-exchange area of Vijayawada is identified by the one area common code. The common numbering scheme is sometimes called as linked numbering scheme. So the common numbering scheme is also known as linked numbering scheme. In this scheme, all the exchanges in a town were 
collectively identified by the name of the term. So all the exchanges say we will say all the 15 exchanges put together, we will say as far as the outside point of view, we will say Vijayawada exchange. Now let us discuss about the national numbering plan bar, international numbering plan. How we have to give the national numbering plan for within the country and for international dialing, how we have to give the numbering scheme. The introduction of subscriber trunk dialing, STAD, or direct distance dialing for intercity and intertown long distance connections or for a national numbering plan where multi exchanges are identified uniquely by numbers. So, for introduction of STD call, so we have to, there was a necessity to give national numbering plan and each town identified by with one STD code as we are all aware of it now. Subsequent development of international subscriber dialing made it necessary to have an international numbering plan and to have national numbering plan conforming to the international one. So subsequently after the STD, the ISD service was also introduced. So that means internationally, any customer can make to any other customer anywhere in the world. So the call can be between two different countries, maybe located in different continents also. So keeping that in view also for international subscriber dialing ISD, the national link numbering plan should take into consideration about the necessity of the ISD and it should conform to the requirements of the ISD, international subscriber dialing. Now let us discuss about the types of numbering plan. What are the various types of numbering schemes? There are three types in numbering plan. Number one, open numbering plan. Number two, semi-open numbering plan. Number three, closed numbering plan. Then we will try to understand one after the other. First, let us discuss about the open numbering plan. Open numbering plan is also known as non-uniform numbering scheme. This permits wide variation in the number of digits to be used to identify a subscriber within a multi-exchange area or within a country. So, here, the number of digits varies from town to town, from exchange to exchange. So, the length of the number of the digits in telephone number is not uniform. So, this is non-uniform numbering scheme. Open numbering plan leads to non-uniform numbering scheme. This scheme is not in vogue at present. So initially, this scheme was followed subsequently because of non-uniformity and uh, due to the introduction of STD and more specifically the STD. So thus, this scheme, this type of, this model became obsolete. Then next type is semi-open plan, which permits number of digit lengths to differ by one or two digits. So it is almost uniform, but there may be a variation of one or two digits from exchange, one exchange numbering scheme to other exchange numbering scheme. Today, this scheme is common and is used in many countries, including India, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. So generally this is the scheme in vogue. 
semi open plan semi uh, non uniform is almost uniform but not fully uniform so you may be having the number of digits uh, variation one or two digits so one exchange may have six digit number other exchange may have seven digit number or sometimes right? we have seen eight digit numbers also as far as indian scenario is concerned but the variation is limited not extensive variation not more than three or four digits variation between one exchange to other exchange in closed numbering plan or the uniform numbering scheme the number of digits in a subscriber number is fixed so here in the closed numbering scheme or uniform numbering scheme the number of digits for a subscriber is always fixed suppose if it is 10 means 10 fixed irrespective of the town place or exchange all exchanges will have the same numbering pattern the number of digits are same number of digits the starting digits and all may differ de depending upon the the station or the okay std code we can say broadly this scheme is used by a few countries which include france belgium and the countries in the north america so north american countries and european countries france belgium so they follow this closed numbering plan or uniform numbering scheme so north american countries means usa canada hawaii etc okay international numbering plan and the concept of zone how international numbering is adopted so here we have a concept like zones the entire globe is different um, our entire globe is divided into different zones what is that we will see let us see simultaneously this drawing also okay here you can see the numbers one number is there here number 2 is there this is zone 1 this is zone 2 this zone means this american countries zone 2 maybe african countries 3 and 4 european countries okay 7 sy ussr like that then this nine uh is indian india and the countries adjacent to india some of the asian countries you anyway, know let us look into the slide the contents an international numbering plan or world numbering plan has been defined by the cctd so the international numbering plan also known as world numbering plan has been defined by the cctd that is itu the project international telecom union for this purpose the world is divided into nine zones as shown in the figure which we have just discussed each zone is given a single digit code for european zone two codes have been allotted because of large number of countries within this zone so each zone is given one one unique digit for american countries north america one however for europe since there are more number of countries in european zone so they have given two uh, single digit codes so it may be 3 or 4 depending upon the country some countries are given zone code as 3 some countries are given zone code 9 so as i already discussed for india it falls under 
जोन नहीं इंटरनेशनल नंबरिंग प्लान एंड नंबर ऑफ डिजिट्स इन दिस स्लाइड वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ डिजिट्स एंड इंटरनेशनल नंबरिंग स्कीम हियर यू कैन सी दिस ड्राइंग सो कंट्री कोड इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल नंबर कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू पार्ट्स पार्ट वन इज कंट्री कोड पार्ट टू इज नेशनल नंबर एंड कंट्री कोड मे बी ऑफ वन और टू और थ्री डिजिट सो द मैक्सिम डिजिट एलोकेटेड फॉर कंट्री कोड इज थ्री एंड द नेशनल नंबर मे वेरी फ्रॉम नाइन टू इलेवन डिजिट ऑल पुट टूगेदर so it can be of 12 digits maximum length so country code plus national number code put together the number of digits should not exceed 12 the maximum number of digits let us go through the contents okay. every international number consists of two parts as shown in the figure the country code contains one Two or three digits. The first digit is the zone code in which the country lies. Lies. Sorry. So depending upon the zone or depending upon the country, which is uh, depending upon the zone in which the country is located. So the first digit will be by default zone code. So for example, India. international code is 91 9 is the zone code so one is the further second digit for india so 92 may be some other country or 912 may be some other country like that for example in zone 3 france country code is 33 cc stands for country code 33 and albania 355 and in zone 9 india country code is 91 a smaller country like maldives so it will have, it is having three digit country code 960 so that means in maldives they can have maximum of Nine digits for their national numbering plan, so it cannot exceed. But as far as India is concerned, since our country code is nine one, which is of two digits, so you can have national numbering scheme up to ten digits. Okay, this is the essence of this slide. further we will discuss about the international numbering plan in cases where the integrated plan or the uniform numbering scheme already covers entire zone the countries in that zone are identified identified by the single digit zone code itself since in the usa they follow uniform numbering scheme so the country code for usa is 1 so the zone code also 1 the zone code as well as the country code for the united states of america is 1 because they are already following the integrated plan for example all the countries in the north american zone that is zone 1 have the code as 1 and all the countries in the ussr have code as 7 so ussr the code is 7 for all the countries in the united uh, soviet russia so the all the countries will have the common code 7 zone zone code also 7 so so uniform numbering plan since they are following so their zone code itself is 
their country codes. The North American Numbering Plan (NANP) is a telephone numbering plan for World Zone One, which comprises of 25 distinct regions in 20 countries, primarily in North America, including Caribbean. Some North American countries, most notably Mexico, do not participate in the NANP, that is North American Numbering Plan. Mexico, they don't follow North American Numbering Plan. Let us discuss some more information on International Numbering Plan. World Numbering Plan or the International Numbering Plan places restrictions on the National Numbering Plan of each country. So, because the limitation is 12 digits maximum, including the zone code, country code, and national numbering scheme. So, all put together, you should, you should not have more than 12 digits. So, depending upon the zone code and the country code, accordingly, the, the digits of national numbering scheme is to be adjusted or manipulated or you have to manage with the leftover digits only. Suppose if the country code is having three digits, so generally uh, more number of digits country code is given to smaller countries. So they will, suppose if there are three digits for a country code, what we have seen for Maldives 960, so they have, have to uh, manage with the nine digits. It is possible because it is a small country, number of towns are also less, number of exchanges are also less. So the codes are sufficient, nine digits are sufficient. The number of digits in an international subscriber is limited to maximum 12 digits, which we were discussing repeatedly. In practice, with a few exceptions, all numbers are limited to 11 digits. Though the theoretical limit fixed by CCITT is 12 digits, barring a few exceptions, most of the world numbers in different countries, they are confined to 11 digits. As a result, the number of digits available for national numbering plan is 11 minus n, where n is the number of digits in the country code. So, since we are confining the total number of digits to 11 instead of 12, uh, that is permitted by CCITT. So, since we want to reduce the number of digits, because the digit, more number of digits, more digit analysis, there will be more load on the strain on the exchange processing. So, if it is less, as less as possible, it is better. So, in case of uh, most of the countries, it is confined to 11. So, the number of digits uh, left over for the national numbering is 11 minus n, where n stands for the number of digits for international code, ISD. Suppose if 960 or three digits are there for international code, so yeah, a specific country with the three digit international code is left with eight digits for their national numbering plan. In India, total number of digits, including STD, is 10. And with international STD code 91, total digits is 12. So, as far as India is concerned, so with STD, which differentiate from one exchange to other exchange, or from town to other town, so we have 10 digits numbering scheme and our international ISD code is 91. So 10 plus 2 digits, that is 12 digits. Here I have given one example. Example, some somebody 
टू फोर नईन डबल नईन फाइव नईन इज मई टेलीफोन नंबर एट विजयवाड सो विजयवाड को एसटीडी को डबल सिक्स सो संबड़ी फ्रम यूएस इज कॉलिंग मी यू टू डेल नईन वन दिस इज द हईएस डी को फॉलोड बै द विजयवाड मल्टी एक्चे एरिया को एसटीडी को फार एस दि इंडियन सिनारियो इज कंसर्न विदि दि नेशन इज कंसर्न Vijayawada and its satellite exchanges are identified by A double six. Then two four nine two four nine specifies one of the fifteen exchanges I have told in the example, and double nine five nine is my telephone number in this exchange. Exchange having two four nine as the code. A double six is the STD code. So when someone is calling from other country they have to dial 91866 so 91 points towards india 866 directs to vijayawada 249 directs to the exchange on which my line is connected and 99 is actually my telephone number in this 249 exchange then having discussed something about international numbering plan so we will further discuss about the national numbering plan before this we have understood the international numbering scheme adopted places certain restrictions on the national numbering plan so what is the pattern of national numbering plan here here there are three sub blocks within the national numbering plan okay it may be six digits or seven digits or eight digits whatever it is one is the area bar trunk code this is std code for example for vijayawada it is 866 as i have shown in the earlier example then the exchange code that means to which exchange in vijayawada if i say there are 15 exchanges to which exchange i am connected this is the exchange code then this is the line number within this exchange what is my line number so this exchange code plus line number put together it is known as subscriber number it is also known as directory number this we will go through one after the other a national number consists of three parts as shown in the figure the area code or the trunk code std code identifies a particular area or the multi exchange area of the called subscriber somebody is dialing my number from hyderabad so he has to land on vijayawada so what is the multi exchange area code for vijayawada 866 so he has to dial 866 of course 0866 std means 0 prefixing 0 866 then he has to dial the exchange code that is 249 then he has to dial my line number 9958 so dial it okay let us discuss part 1 the area code determines the routing for a trunk call and the charge for it the significance of this part one is to identify the area so somebody is calling from somewhere so he is calling me means it is to be my area is to be identified i belong to vijayawada area so my area code is 866 so that is the significance of this one based on the area code only the calls are charged by the service provider according to cctt a numbering scheme numbering area sorry is defined as that area in which any two subscribers use identical dialing procedure to reach any other subscriber in the network so cctt has defined 
numbering area or the area, multi-exchange area, in which any two subscribers use identical dialing procedure to reach any other subscriber in the network. Suppose in which I want to say, if you say there are 15 exchanges, so from any exchange, you are calling a subscriber to you are making a call to any other exchanges out of these 15. So uniformly anybody has to dial. From exchange 1, you are dialing the number of uh, exchange 14 number. So you will dial one pattern. Suppose somebody is dialing from exchange 3 to the number of exchange number same 14, he should also dial the same number. So there cannot be different uh, dialing patterns uh, when you are dialing within these 15 exchanges with the different patterns. From exchange 1, one pattern, exchange 2, another pattern, it cannot be. So anybody within the exchange area, they have to dial each other with the uniform pattern. If you see this example, you can better appreciate. So one example is given here. So my number is 249-9959. So my friend's number is 253-999. So when I dial, I have to dial this number. There may be another subscriber who may be dialing from, say for example, from 256 exchange. So, he, 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 suppose he wants to speak with the same person, 253-999. From that exchange also, they will be dialing 253-999 only. So, irrespective of the exchange within the multi-exchange area, from where you are dialing, the same uniform numbering method is to be adopted. Then, let us... Consider about part two. An exchange code identifies a particular exchange within a numbering scheme. Just let us go back to, uh, you know, example is given. So, an exchange code, here I have given my number only for explanation purpose. This is 249. This identifies the specific exchange with 249 as yes, starting three digits. The exchange code determines the routing for an incoming trunk call from another numbering area or for a call originating from one exchange and destinated to another in the same numbering plan. So, this exchange code determines to where the call is to be routed. Then part 3, this one. The subscriber line number is used to select the call's subscriber line at the terminating exchange. So, by dialing 0866, somebody has entered into Vijay order network. By dialing 249, they have entered or uh, they have reached up to the exchange where my line is connected. So, this part 3 within this 249 exchange, this is my line number. So, I am located at 9959. My serial number is 9959. So, within the exchange, within this exchange, 249 exchange, my serial number is 9959. In CCITT terminology, the combination of the exchange code and the subscriber line number is known as subscriber number. These two put together, exchange code and line number put together is known as subscriber number, which is the number listed in the telephone directory. So, this is the number 249959 is listed in the telephone directory in of Vijayawada city. Of course, nowadays, telecom service providers are dispensing with preparation of hard copy of telephone directory. So that's why the number is known as 249959. Vijayawada is known as the telephone directory number of 
Hariva Prasad. Okay. So this much we will discuss in this uh, part one and we will further continue about the uh, numbering uh, scheme or the numbering plan of telephone uh, networks. So if you like my videos, please subscribe to my uh, channel as given in this slide. I thank you for participating in this discussion.